Well, hello there, people of the internet. And we need Duo. Oh, not, this is not Duo, the PC. And uh, this is my cool Duo rig. I had it for 11 ish years or so. I talked about it a few times. However, probably know that it's a Core 2 Duo system. And it being a Duo Core CPU, it's not really up to modern spec, especially since this. This is the E4400, one of the first versions starting at 2 GHz. So, 2 cores on 2 GHz. Really, really sad. But today is that gonna change. We're gonna auto clock the nuts off it. We'll be auto clocking the, the GPU and the CPU all together just to see just how much performance we can get. And the entire system is running on stock cooling. If you, you can probably hear the stock fan spinning fast over there. However, it's not really hearing much. It's just really loud. You can see our temperatures, these are the core temperatures, they are relatively high, however they don't really move much. So the GPU in here is the Radeon 4830, we'll be overclocking it too, however it's not really an overclocker, so let's just get to business. So first of all we need a reference, and we're going to do a Cinebench run, just to see how much we can actually do. I haven't made a I haven't done a run in Cinebench on this piece. I mean, I have like ages ago and I don't fully remember the score. So, I want to keep an eye on, eye on a few things. So, eh, there we go. So, as you can see, it's gonna take ages. But it's running at 2007 megahertz and at 1.36 volts. However, I've observed that sometimes, again, it's all in auto clocks, everything, it's all automatic and the BIOS. However, I have observed that voltage sometimes goes up to 1.4 on stock, which is a bit odd. You will see later on why. And at the end, as you can see, the temps are relatively okay. I mean, I, I'm fine as long as it doesn't hit, you know, ADC. It's okay, really. We will be doing a game benchmark and a heaven benchmark. We'll be benchmarking their 3. Well, finished, thank God. And scored a measly 88 points on the setup bench. I mean, it took it like 10 minutes to finish. To our reference, here's the Lenovo laptop I talked about a while ago. And there you can see the CPU. It's also a dual core, but it does turbo up to 2.4 GHz and does have hyper threading. It's a 40, 4210U. And it scored 222 points. I legit finished this test three times on this laptop by the time the duo finished once. Right, so here you can see the GPU settings. It's well, it's pretty potato. It's pretty 2007. If I'll be on, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, yeah, so we're gonna try and benchmark some games. So for beginners, let's start the three. Ah crap! It's gonna take a while. So so we're in the three, and you can see the settings. It's well, it's all high. But we're gonna set it to medium, at least for now, and we're gonna do a benchmark. I know it's here somewhere. Run benchmark test. Yes. So we'll see how it rolls. So even on those graphical settings, it's well, it's playable. It's definitely playable. It's just not the smoothest thing in the world. But I'm guessing 30 FPS when it finishes. Well, I called it, it averaged 33 FPS and a minimum of 22. However, I kept an eye on it the whole time, and while 33 FPS isn't really that high, it was stable, it didn't drop a whole lot of frames, it didn't stutter a lot. It, it was playable, I wouldn't mind playing at 30 FPS. I would love it to be higher, but you know. But just for the gigs, we're gonna try the same test, but on 720p. Our this is a eight, uh, 18 by 10 monitor, and the, the resolutions are a bit. This is as close as you can get to 720p. 720p. Here we go. 720p and medium. Actually, I'm just gonna set it again. Choose preset. Medium. The drum roll, please. And 33 FPS. What the hell? So it's obviously that. So it's obvious that there's a bottleneck somewhere else. Changing the resolution had absolutely no effect. Okay, so let's head into the BIOS and see what we can do. I'll do two stages. Because, I mean, I mean 
probably assume this, but I have already overclocked this CPU over a year ago and it's and it stayed overclocked like that for about a year. But there's an interesting way the CPU can overclock. You've probably seen voltage, it's like 1.36-ish, it's almost a 1.4. However, this, you have the core to do E4400 gigahertz, which is this model right here, but they go all the way up to 3.2 or 3 gigahertz, the first generation of a core to do the E4 for something. So that allows this chip to allow, reach some pretty high clocks with relatively low voltage. So, manual. Here, here's what we're gonna do for the start. We're gonna wait another little bit. Well, no, 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 not that. We're going to go for 2.7. And CPU core voltage will go really real 1.275 is the last time at work we won't change anything else however just i just want to show you something look how optimistic that is well then from 100 to 450 yeah so theoretically this motherboard is a p5 ld2 se motherboard it does allow you technically to go to uh, 4.5 hertz on your dual so yeah, I guess. No, not that. As you can see, it's a, a it's a core to do with two gigahertz. Yeah, and there's this one thing, in it's on the bottom of the screen. Intel speed step technology. Yeah, it kind of messes everything up. So don't turn that on. Let us see So here, so here's what I've been talking about. As you can see, it is on 2.7 gigahertz. Like, uh, by the way, we're not multi we're not changing the multiplier. We'll change the base. So yeah, but as you can see, the voltage is almost the same as stock, if not at, at times lower than stock, which is a bit unusual. We have a higher clock but a lower voltage, which means more speed but less theoretically less heat so let's do Cinebench run I predict well, let me know in the comments below what do you think how high or actually how low it will score I predict I don't know maybe 75 also I want to point out that even though I set voltage in the BIOS to 1.275 was it the voltage still goes slightly over that which is you know it's I think almost a margin of error given the age of the system it's again it's 11 years old the fact that it can overclock like this is to be praised I mean just to confirm that even here in speed fan we're getting pretty much the same readings although speed fan ref refreshes very very slowly maybe once every few seconds so you can see the temperatures are slightly going up but it's all under control yes well it finished I got 119 Cinebench points thing. Okay, so that's that. Let's go back into the BIOS and crank the dial all the way to 30. Well, 300 in this case. So here's the thing. Obviously, I'm not going blind into this. I've already done some preparations. And the thing is, yes, on 2.7, you can really go far with this low of voltage. However, once you go to 3 GHz, you really do need to start turning that voltage up. Well, not a whole lot. I mean, I it was on 1.3 for a very, very long time, like almost a year. However, I, for reasons, probably because it's kind of slowly eating itself or whatever, it started to become a bit unstable. It's every, I don't know, every, every few days it will crash, just a blue screen and it, you know, runs normally. But I don't really want that, and it's becoming more and more unstable. So you're going to set this voltage again. It's not really high. It's when it boots, the voltage is gonna pull is probably the same it pulls on auto. So it's really nothing too much. I mean, you know, right off the bat, I can tell the system is much more faster. And it's what's interesting though, even at three, three gigahertz, you can see right there. 3 GHz, it's pulling pretty much the same voltage as it did on 2 GHz. So, yeah, you know, and 
this is just Windows being Windows. Yeah. Skype. Problem reporting. What's the problem? Everything. So it's pulling pretty much the same voltage, but on 3 GHz, which makes me wonder how low can you go on 2 GHz? Subscribe to find out! <laughs> Just kidding. I'll probably make a video about it sometime. It's probably not going to be a huge difference between uh, 2 giga 2.7 and 3 GHz. And the temperature always levels up around 70, 75 C. It kind of well, as you can see, it scored 121 points, which is not really mm, a giant improvement over 2.7 GHz, but whatever. So before overclocking the GPU, I just want to run the Dirt 3 benchmark one more time. Before overclocking the GPU, that is. Let's see how much of an impact. One, maybe two FPS more. It does run smoother though. And well, it's standing like that, so might as well try it. We know, there we go. Try it again, that is, hopefully it works. The thing is, this is a Radeon 4030, and I have to use Windows generic drivers for the drivers. I mean, even though it does have dedicated power, a 6 pin power connector, I can't control the voltage or power limit, nothing. I mean, that's also probably because the GPU doesn't support it, but it's kind of sad. Even though I have the official drivers for the graphics card, yeah, I still have this disk ATI. I mean, it, it says on the GPU it's an ATI, not AMD, but it's still Radeon, so yeah. Well, it is an improvement. We got three more FPS on the minimum and three more FPS on the average compared to stock. So, it's an improvement, it's definitely an improvement, and I, and I said I'm gonna try a uh, heaven benchmark, but I had to go in 10 minutes. So that kind of throws a monkey wrench into my plans, but this just gives you an idea how well it can overclock. As you can see, the temperatures, uh, they didn't really, well, it peaked at 70, 71C, which is not that bad actually. I did change the thermal paste about a year ago, that's kind of cool. So yeah, thank you for watching, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, please do make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing ya, peace.